Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. This is a, uh, it's a, it's just a wonderful opportunity. Just come and see this fantastic lady that we all knew and shared and were very much missed. Uh, I want to bring my niece, who is uh, the eldest of the grandchildren, to say the prayer. Good afternoon. Let's pray. My dear God, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for blessing us so abundantly. Please be with all those who need our prayers and that are less fortunate than us and who cannot be with us today. Inspire us and lead us, guide us and teach us, and help us to walk in your loving way. We give you every second of our day, Lord. Amen. My grandmother wanted um, this song to be played at her memorial, so per her request, please enjoy. Anthony Martinez, I'm the oldest grandson, um, and as many of you guys know, my grandmother was a very spiritual person. Can we turn this a little closer? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to read uh, a couple of scriptures, um, and I, I feel like my grandmother selected these to be read, and I feel like these really explain a lot, um, especially about her book that she wrote, which my 
my younger sister is going to read next. So, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7. For this reason I say to you, let that grace of God which is in you, given to you by my hands, have living power. For God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of self-control. Now Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as the prophet to the nations. <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Rose, and I'm going to be reading out of Reflections of a Simple Soul, which is the book that my grandmother wrote and published. Singing in the Jewish temple was a very enriching sp uh, spiritual experience for me. Since then, I have been with the Muslims in the mosque. I have attended services with the Hindus, the Buddhists, etc. It always amazes me that the message is always the same, and yet we don't seem to get it. We hear that we must have greater love for God and our fellow man, but how can that be accomplished if we don't understand one another or accept our differences? How wonderful would it be if members from different faiths got together for regular meetings? Perhaps then we could begin to have a better understanding of our differences and an incentive to work together in creating a more loving and peaceful world. We would all be entitled to our own beliefs since we are all in the process of learning and growing in our own spirituality. There would be no judging or condemnation. There has been an abundance of that in every one of our lives. We would not try to convert each other because we would know that since God loves us all equally, we are all exactly where God wants us to be in every aspect of our lives. And Rose was the third of the Martinez grandchildren. And uh, I want to thank her and Nicole and Anthony for really putting this thing together today. Now in eulogy by Deborah Slag. On the screen. Hello, my name is Deb Schlag, and since I cannot be there in person, I'm happy to share some brief memories of Madeline from a distance via technology. Madeline was a wonderful, strong, loving woman with the voice of an angel. She was a daughter, a sister, a cousin, a wife, mother, aunt, mother-in-law, grandmère, great-grandmère, and most of all, a fabulous friend to many, including me, my husband Lloyd, and our son Michael. We were all saddened to learn of her passing on August 3rd, 2021, shortly after losing her husband Lee of 71 years. Both of them were so very special and we shared many special occasions together, including anniversaries, which were both in September. We celebrated 43 years of marriage this September 16th and they would have celebrated 72 years on September the 24th. Madeline has been in my life for 63 years, and it's hard to know that I can no longer call her and hear, hi, honey, on the other end. Both of us were from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I lived next door to her parents, Irene and Noel Turgeon, until I was married. The Cerniacs and the Turgeons were great neighbors, and each summer when I was young, I would look forward to Madeline's visits home with her children, so they could spend time with their grandparents, aunts and uncles, and extended Canadian family and friends. They would arrive in June and leave in August, and often I was lucky to join them at Pigeon Lake, where Michelle's Uncle John had a lakefront cottage. We all had great fun at the lake. It was amazing to me that they got almost three months of summer holidays from school in the U.S., compared to barely two here in Alberta. Michelle and I became fast friends and have been close for over 60 years. 
The Fiorinos are like a second family to me. I love them, and I share in this time of sorrow. COVID restrictions have kept us from traveling outside of Canada for more than 18 months, so it pains me not to be here participating in this celebration of life for Madeline, and not too long ago for Lee as well. I remember Madeline, she made the most amazing pralines. And one year, while in Canada, she and her entrepreneurial spirit put together a pop-up Mexican food stand for the duration of Edmonton's Klondike Days ex exhibition. Now, this was around 50 years ago and well prior to the fast food offerings at today's fairs, and she was really quite successful. I recall Michelle, John, and I, and maybe Paul and Robert too, all worked hard making and selling tacos, tostados, burritos, pralines, etc., to Edmonton, Edmontonians and visitors alike, all raving at the goodness of the food. And when we weren't at the stand, we were in the kitchen shredding lettuce, chopping tomatoes and onions, making guacamole and pralines for the next day. At least Michelle and I were, I know that for sure, along with Madeline. It was a full 10 days and it was great fun. She received favorable reviews in the local paper, the Edmonton Journal, and she, she was unstoppable. Continuing with that entrepreneurial vein, she also formulated a face serum called Mato's Mist and wrote a book, Revelations of a Simple Soul. She was not only smart, but a spiritual woman as well, showing her love for the Lord in many ways. She was always thankful and showed her gratefulness through prayer, often and always before meals. I loved the spontaneity of her simple and sincere prayers. Lloyd and I loved spending time with Madeline and Lee, and we made many visits to their home in Parker, Colorado, and more recently in Tucson. They so wanted us to move to Saddlebrook after Lloyd retired. I remember we visited Tucson together for the first time. We went to a barbecue that John was hosting, and both of us looked up at the dark sky and simultaneously said at, at the very same moment, <laughs> we should move here. What beautiful stars. Well, that was the first time in 40 years either of us ever considered moving away from home, St. Albert, Alberta, Canada, let alone making the statement at exactly the same time. Madeline Lee thought that was the best idea ever. And I know why they thought that was a little piece of heaven. She was so cute and spunky. And it was hard to get mad at her, even when she was being difficult. And that's probably why I was able to stay in her good graces for so long. You know, I remember she, she loved shoes with heels and had such tiny feet that the style she loved always seemed to be on sale. They were too small for everybody else. So she would always score a bargain and she loved bargains. When I visited Tucson for the first time, she had to take me to the Golden Goose on a shopping trip. Wow, that was quite an experience. But with her, it was all good fun. Madeline always called me on my birthday to sing happy birthday. She soon enlisted Lee and the dog and in the last 10 years, even John. And Michelle and I have birthdays one day apart, so it's easy to remember. I so looked forward to those calls and will really miss that angelic voice. My patience never seemed to run out with Madeline. What a gift she was. Always welcoming, nurturing and encouraging me to be the best I could be. I'm so glad John was able to be in Tucson with his parents over the last 10 years to ensure their quality of life was as good as possible, given they were both getting on in years, both celebrating birthdays of 96 before they passed. And while I could go on, I won't, as I'm sure there are others that wish to share. I feel blessed to have had Madeline in my life and will remember her with love and admiration. She lived a long, full life with lots of adventures. May she rest in peace with her darling husband, Lee. 
while they will no longer be in their little piece of heaven on earth in Tucson, they will be together forever in heaven above. We love you, Madeline, until we meet again. That uh, choked me up too, so here we go. <clears throat> Is there anyone that would like to share? You can uh, come up if you'd like. If not, we'll... Uh, does anyone want to share something? Does anyone want to share something? My name is Lindsay. Um, I'm a middle grandchild. Um, I have um, something from Father Pat Valdez that he would like to um, be read today. My deepest sympathies to you, Robert, Paul, Michelle, John, and Teddy and your children on the loss of Madeline and your father, Lee. I think I first came to know Madeline in 1973 at All Souls Church in Inglewood. Madeline was the choir director and I helped on Sundays. As was typical of Madeline, she involved everyone around her. So I met her and the children. I was often invited to the family home. I think the address was 295 Pinecone Road in Parker where I spent many memorable Sunday afternoons there with the family. Madeline was a person who touched so many persons and lives, and she always had time for people. Her outgoing personality and joy of loving made her so attractive to so many people. She had the way of making persons feel their positive worth, and it was a joy to encounter her. In other words, she showed Christ and communicated God's grace through her presence, words, and work. Over the years, her circle of acquaintances and friends grew larger, and she continued to give of herself. She took Christ to others. I am reminded of St. Andrew, apostle, described in St. John's Gospel, of John taking persons to Christ. Madeline did the same. For me, Madeline was a light in my life. She enriched me and so many others. We are better persons because of knowing her, her energy and her family. She will be missed, but we know where her Lord has taken her after her work in the vineyard of the Lord to be with her Christ, her Lee and family and friends in heaven. Hello, I have uh, my sons Felix and Isaac here to help me read a message from our family in Canada. We are very pleased to have shared collaboratively in the planning of Madeline's celebration of life. Since we cannot be there in person due to COVID restrictions, our spiritual message of love is sent to Madeline and the Fiorino family via email from her Turjan family in Canada. Madeline was predeceased by her father, Noel, mother, Irene, and siblings, John and Bernard. She leaves to mourn her loss two younger siblings, brother, Dr. Pierre Turgeon, who lives in the greater Ottawa area, Canada's capital city, her sister, Marie Claire Turgeon, who lives in Edmonton, Alberta, um, Edmonton, Alberta, capital city. She also leaves many immediate member, family members, nieces, nephews, and their children, along with many other relatives and friends from Canada. <coughs> Our message is for Madeline, her children, Robert, Paul, Michelle, John, and Ted, her 11 grandchildren, five great-grandchildren, relatives, friends, and acquaintances in the USA. Thank you, Merci, for enhancing the life of our beautiful, talented, fun-loving spiritual sister, Madeline. She was truly blessed in having five children who not only loved her, but also found her adventurous, adorable, dedicated, prayerful, and sweet. Her husband, Lee, was a loving and supportive husband of 71 years. All of, all of you also enhanced her life in some way through phone calls, visits, cards, letters, etc which were appreciated not only by her, but by her husband and children as well. 
Merci. We fear you know, for being here, not only in spirit, but also in another extraordinary way. You created the design for this beautiful facility, which is not only a legacy to your architectural achievements, but allows us to have a unique experience together in this building. How fortunate we all are to be here physically and spiritually, to share in the celebration of life for our beautiful and unique sister, wife, and mother, Madeline. Thank you, merci, goodbye, au revoir. Enjoy the rest of Madeline's celebration. God bless you all, stay safe. I can't see, so if somebody else wants to come up, please do. Um, I want to share a little bit about my grand mare. Um, so about a couple months ago, I let everybody know that I made grandpa, grandpa, and I made grandma, grandma. Um, I have been so lucky because I have had a 40 beautiful years with my grandparents for them to be able to help inspire and um, really give a shadow of excellence um, in their legacy. Just like the verses said, um, there is power and love for each of us and that we've all been set apart. And I think that that's very telling of Grammaire because I think that that was exactly who she was, very powerful and set apart. Um, she had an expectation of excellence and some very high standards. Because she thought you could do it, that means you could. That included piano lessons, especially if great grammar came by and she tried to teach you that that lady could play. Um, also using your voice as a instrument, which obviously has been spread in our whole entire family. Um, but if she believed that you could do it, then that was what you could, that what she wanted from you. <laughs> in a weird way, it helps me be inspired. Um, and I think that as a dancer and as a performer, I really got a lot from the two of them as a pair, um, both for inspiration, but also for that strive for excellence. But there was never a lack of open arms at that house ever since I was young. Um, in good times and bad times, you knew that you were going to be received in love. and. Um, also always encouraged in adventure. I was an exchange student my senior year of high school and my sister and my mom uh, traveled across the ocean to come visit me. Um, we spent a little bit of time doing the midnight train from, <laughs> from Barcelona up to Amsterdam. And that woman is like, she was like in charge, full speed ahead. Um, this was before we had really nice rolly suitcases. And she had this little suitcases on roll on rollers, but it was like one of those old ones that flopped around and just had like this little floppy handle. And she would just go walking through every airport, every train station, and that stupid thing kept falling over. And she'd just turn around, pick it up, and start again. And yet she was still always ahead. But you ended up getting such a great time. I don't know, I think she probably only had a couple pairs of clothes. That was kind of her way that she rolled. She was like, you just wash them in the sink at night. Um, and if you ever traveled with her, which I think she ended up getting to do with quite a few, um, it, was, it was definitely some memories to always remember. Um, and I think that that was one of the things I have a very hard time with grass growing around me. And I contribute a lot of that to her. Um, because I'd call and say, hey, should I? Or, of course you should. Oh, yes, honey. Oh, that's wonderful. And also, you should really check out this other thing. Um, she'd wake up knowing what she wanted to cook for dinner. And if you were going to go on a visit, she'd call you like three or four days and say, now, what would you like to have? What do you like? Oh, anything is good, Grandma. Well, I mean, but what do you really like? Do you feel like having sausage and peppers? Which I would always say yes to. An entrepreneur, like we already know, she was actually a yoga pioneer. 
which i don't know if all of you know she helped to bring actually bring that so we grew up learning yoga but i would be like oh brother and now look at it she was a midwife pioneer natural child childbirth same thing she was an organic cooking pioneer she made organic cool before organic was cool um and my mom has told me plenty of stories of the morning drinks that she would make them drink um i don't know yeast and roots and berries and grass stuff like that they started Ave Maria Catholic Church, spiritual pioneer, and she was always, always very fashionable. I have been trying to keep it together. I'm about to be a puddle. We have lost both of my grandparents. Grandpa and Grandma were a unit. They were a creative unit, a strive for excellence unit, a spiritual unit, unit and have left an incredible legacy, and they will never be forgotten. Thank you for coming to see. Can you hear me back there? I was a hard acoustics. Okay. I don't want this to be about me, but it needs to be about Madeline. Uh, back about 30 some years ago, myself and some other fellows <clears throat> had this little Gregorian chant choir. And um, since we were sort of persona non grata with the uh, establishment of the Catholic Church, we didn't get to sing in, in, in the, at masses uh, that the uh, bishop local bishop, archbishop would permit, I guess. But uh, there was a priest who was retiring. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe it's from St. Thomas Parish. I think it's out on East 14th Avenue, on somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, Madeline coached us, had been coaching us for a while. And we got it pretty well together. And so we did the credo in noon deum, and uh, the rafters shook a little bit. And when we left, the uh, archbishop was in a state of catatonic, uh, catatonic state somewhat. So I thought, my gosh, Madeline, you did a good job. And she was smiling a whole lot. I think that's probably a, <clears throat> enough. So I'll just go off to my little corner. Thank you very much. All right, we have one more submission via letter. Well, my sister figures that out. So it's from uh, Mike Gatliff, who's a friend of the family. It's called My Aunt Madeline and Uncle Lee. I did not ask Madeline if I could include Lee in this reflection, but it doesn't matter. I know she would have said, sure, honey. Now, who in the world would mind? Who in the world indeed, not Madeline? And especially if it meant including Lee. Being included is what I always felt around Madeline. Our families began sharing holidays and other times together when the Gatliffs moved to Colorado Springs in 1961. And the Fiorinos were living down the street from the drive-in theater in Littleton. It was not long before Madeline and Lee became one of the first settlers in Parker and pioneering settlers is what they felt like to me as a kid of eight or nine. You could only see one other house from their home in Parker, and the rest was wide open land to be explored, full of petrified wood and horned toads. My dad, Renee, Madeline's cousin, from whom she loved deeply and unconditionally, once told me, your Aunt Madeline and Uncle Lee have some gypsy in them. I remember thinking, I wish I had some gypsy in me. It's not an exaggeration to say that the generous kindness and love Madeline always showed my father may have been the only grace he experienced from a blood relative. It was Madeline who taught me to love, love, love lasagna. And the feasts at Thanksgiving, Christmas, and any other time were legendary. I even knew that as a dumb kid. There was always a sense of plenty and more at Madeline and Lee's table, which was not only a reflection of the food, but of them. A dumb kid looking at two married adults never really knows what's going on, but it always felt like Madeline and Lee balanced each other.
for example, why do I think it had to be Madeline's idea for the entire family to go camping at the Calgary Stampede in the late 60s, and that maybe Lee stayed home? The one story that Paul and John told me over and over from that trip was about the inebriated guy who came into their campsite saying, my name is Jack, I'm drinking Jack, and I ain't got Jack. <laughs> Characters like that never showed up at the Air Force Academy where I lived. And if one did, the Air Police would have, have arrived in a minute. Later, as a dumb teenager in 1969, I got to witness Lee trying to ride herd for a few days on three independent, creative, energetic, articulate, outspoken teenage sons. The climactic scene came when Lee confronted Robert about being out until midnight with the family station wagon. <laughs> Lee was worked up. Robert was unfazed. But just to amp things up a little more, Robert says, oh, by the way, Dad, <laughs> that station wagon shimmies at 80. <laughs> In these last few years, I did something I wasn't smart enough to do with my parents. I had some long, wonderful conversations with Madeline about her early life in Canada and New York City. Hearing about the young girl made me love and appreciate Madeline even more. And beyond that, something unexpected and Madeline's last gift to me, we realized that we were not only aunt and nephew, but dear friends who could always pick up where we left off. I look forward to that day when we could pick up the conversation again. Thank you.
blesses those who are poor and realizes their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And in true grammar fashion, she's going to interrupt this program with something that I think she would love that we get to share with her. So far. Contestant number five now to sing a song that uh, she has created by herself. Here is Madeline Fiorino. This 
song I'm going to sing in Spanish. I wrote it and I sing it in Spanish and in French. So I thought I would translate a little bit of it. It's, uh, it's a very sad song. A song about an impossible love called Pourquoi mon amour? Why my love? Or Por qué mi amor? Qui 
Vous savez bien que dans le fond je ne crois rien, mais cependant je veux encore écouter ces mots que j'adore. Votre voix au son caressant qui les murmure en frémissant me berce de sa belle histoire. Et malgré moi, je veux y croire.
There you go. A couple of this from mom and dad. And this is a beautiful slideshow by my nephew and godson Anthony. So if it wasn't for mom, I would never have done ballet, I'll tell you. And now I'm dedicating our my 50th nutcracker to them both this year. If you want, we have the prayer, the final prayer here of the celebration. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as it is to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. Thank you for sharing this celebration of life today. Thank you all. We'll see you out in the lobby. Thank you. You satisfy the hungry heart Sweet. Come here to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and in his voice. So when you go, your family, Lord, Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share? Yes.
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord.